Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Books. I'm Chris, and today I have a very, very exciting video that I've been working on for quite a long time, and that is going over my crazy Lego shopping experience in North Germany. Now, in case you're unaware, North Germany, specifically the Hamburg region, is for whatever reason known to be a hub for used Lego shopping. Whether it be the variety of used LEGO stores or the fact that you can literally just walk into a random comic book store and they probably will be selling some old discontinued vintage used LEGO. I don't know what it is about the location, but there are so, so many different stores. And here's the thing, I was recently on vacation with my friend in Europe and we had a pretty limited amount of time to actually be able to explore each of these stores. Specifically, I had two days, or technically one and a half days in North Germany. We had one day where we actually just got in super late in the evening and then we had the, the day there. And the next day we actually had a train leaving in mid afternoon. So really I basically had a day and a morning to really kind of explore all these stores. So previously I've already published a video taking a look at what I did on that kind of second day in the morning, which was to visit what I consider to be one of, if not the greatest German used Lego store, Bartobrick, which you can check out linked in the description below. I had a fantastic time having conversations with the owner, talking about Lego, and just overviewing the entire haul from that store. But that was just one store out of the very many that I was able to visit on the first day in North Germany. And mind you, this was a pretty crazy adventure, and that's why I've split this video up in two parts. I was kind of holding back on posting this video until I actually had all of these sets constructed for the hulls, and then I realized I had bought close to like 100 sets on just one day in North Germany, so I figured, why wait to put out this video until I've built literally everything? Why not do a part one where I talk about my experience going through the stores, talk about my routing, each store I visited, what I thought of the stores, and then do a part two much, much later where I actually walk through the halls. So if you do want to actually see the halls themselves, I will have to say you probably will be waiting just a little bit longer because I have so many sets to build. I have a massive backlog and I definitely want to showcase all of them and review all of them very briefly, so do stay tuned for that. But this video will be going through my frankly pretty crazy adventure in North Germany by going to all these stores. There were points where I was just totally lost. There were points where I thought I was never going to make it home. There were a lot of points where I would travel long distances only to find that something went horribly wrong with the stores. This is probably best categorized as a misadventure rather than an adventure. But there were a couple stores that made it worth my while, that made the entire thing worth it. So sure, be sure to stay tuned for that, and I think it's now time to jump right into the adventure itself. Let's go. Okay, so this is gonna be a long one, so buckle up because this is a pretty crazy story. So essentially I was kind of holding off on making this video until, well, I actually got a chance to build all the sets so we could say, oh, this was the first part of the adventure, it was kind of crazy, a lot of bad stuff happened, a lot of things went completely wrong, but you know what, here's all the LEGO we got at the end. The thing is though, I got such a crazy amount of LEGO from the end of this haul that I still have not gotten a chance to build it months later. Now, that being said, I've been trying to make my way through my backlog of sealed sets, which is very, very large, and I haven't really even gotten to building, washing, and kind of rebuilding new sets because I always do wash LEGO that are used. So they're kind of sitting in a box, and I figured, you know what, let's split up this video into two parts. The first part will just be covering kind of my crazy misadventure and what stores that I went to. I'm very curious in the comments below if you are either a native to the area or you've visited before. Have you had a chance to visit any of these stores? I tried to basically go to every single one that was around the vicinity of my hotel. Obviously I was a little bit more lucky in terms of some rather than others. Things went better for some stores and they went very abysmally wrong for other stores. But for the most part I did just try to go to as many as I could. And so for this video, we'll be talking through what was my thought process behind going into the journey, what went right, what went wrong, and what was my experience in each store. So here, let me, let me give some exposition first to kind of set the stage here. I was going on a month-long trip with my really good friend from college. We kind of wanted to celebrate graduation before going into the workplace, and we had basically decided to hit as many locations as we could. I really love to travel to Europe. I've been quite a lot, but this was actually my friend's first time in Europe. It was actually his first time out of the US and only his like second time out of his state. So this was a big deal for him. And I was thinking, okay, you know what? I want my friend to have a good experience and I want him to be able to see as much stuff as possible. So going through where we went on our trip, we first went to London and then to, where did we go? Paris, 
Belgium, Amsterdam, North Germany, South Germany, Austria, Norway, Italy, and I believe a few other places as well that I'm kind of forgetting. I think we capped it off at like Disneyland in California as well. So this was a pretty crazy trip to fit into two months. Just that's that's really the way it was. And because of that, I basically only had two days in Hamburg. Now, I planned this not too great going in because one of those two days was a Sunday, which means that, well, it's Germany. It's kind of a smaller part of Germany. It also was Europe everything, and I mean everything, was closed on Sunday. So I effectively gave myself literally one day to hit close to seven different locations. Now, I got very lucky by contacting the owner of the store that I visited on Sunday, which was Bartobrick. Now, that was a wonderful experience. He actually opened up the store just for me to be able to go, so thank you so much for doing that. You really didn't need to, but that was a great time. I actually have already put out my video on Bartobrick. That was a really fantastic experience. I really loved going to that store, and honestly, Honestly, I'm gonna say it now, that was probably my favorite and what I consider to be the best store. Not even in terms of like the selection, but just in terms of the experience I had going in and talking to the owner and learning a lot about LEGO history. Would highly recommend that, so if you haven't seen that video, I have it linked in the description below, which was my adventure in Barterbrick, where essentially I took the train out on Sunday and I spent the day at a store and then I had to rush back and really quickly pack all the Lego I had bought, and we'll explain that at the end of this video. Don't worry, that part's coming, because long story short, we had a train planned out. I had the time wrong somehow, or I think something happened where we had booked two different trains at two different times. I don't know what was going on, there was a lot of like disorganized last minute reshuffling going on during the trip, but... I thought I had a lot more hours than I did. I got back and my friend's like, hey, you ready to go? We're leaving in 30 minutes. I come back and I have like 20 bags of Lego and I'm like, no, I am not ready to go. That's a whole other story. So we'll get to that. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get to that. But anyways, so starting off, we arrived in Hamburg, Germany on a Friday night and we arrived past midnight. I think it was like 1 a.m. So I was quite tired. My friend was fast asleep already and I decided to take the time between sleeping. I think this was around 1.30 a.m. and I was like, okay, you know what? Let me sit down and just map out what is the best way to hit all these locations. All right, so uh, our train was delayed. It is now 1.30 a.m. I'm in my hotel and I got a lot of ground to cover tomorrow. So my buddy's showering, I got some time. I'm gonna figure out my routing and wish me luck because it's kind of just now hitting me that I basically have a day to cover seven used Lego stores. And if my recent trip to Amsterdam is anything to go by, I spend an hour, probably, I'm gonna be honest, an hour and a half at that one single store. So we're gonna have to make things really quick and efficient tomorrow. I need to get some rest ASAP because I'll be getting up bright and early to head out to the stores. So good night for now. So um, remember when I said I was going to bed? Yeah, that was a lie because I have these stores in front of me right now. And I'm just now realizing that a lot of them are actually closing a lot earlier than expected. I probably should have realized that earlier, but I am coming to the realization very quickly right now and I also am coming to the realization that I have no idea how public transit works in Germany. So I'm gonna be up for a little while trying to figure all of this out. So going down the list, I wanted to visit Cross Keist Records Toys and More, which said that they sold used Lego. I wanted to visit Steinzeit Hamburg, Brickopa Spielwaren, Metropolis, and my apologies, I'm going to butcher the pronunciations of German. It was my friend who spoke a little bit of German and not me, I speak French. Uh, so I'm not gonna do a good job of actually pronouncing these, but uh, Metropolis, Fockenstalt für Lego, I'm so sorry about the pronunciation of that. Bricks Bramfeld, Lego Stein of Stein by Harfelder, and I believe those were the big ones. So there were six locations that I had to visit all in one day. Now. I specifically wanted to look at the opening hours. The first one was open from 10 to 5, the second one 11 to 5, the third one 10 to 1, the, the fourth one was 10 to 3, the fifth one was 10 to 4, and the last one was 9.30 to 8. So clearly I had to kind of go alongside a priority list of these in terms of being able to visit them before they closed, because they closed really early on Saturdays. The other issue though was distance. Unfortunately, the ones closing at, say, 10 to 1 or 10 to 3 were very, very far apart, and I would actually, in the process of going from one to the other, hit a lot of the ones that closed around 4 or 5 on my way there, so that meant I had to be really efficient. Going into this, I knew I had to spend no longer than one hour at each store, and some even just 30 minutes, to even just make sure I was able to go from one place to another and hit all the locations I wanted to go. All of these locations were pretty much closed on Sunday, so I had one shot to hit them all. And that was when the planning started. 
So what I did was I sat down and I made a very, very detailed, literally minute by minute schedule, going by bus routings, going by exactly how long it would take to go from one place to another, and let's take a look at that right now, and <laughs> you'll see how accurate I actually stayed to the schedule. The one thing I will say is that when I'm actually traveling on vacation, I'd like to think that whenever I set a schedule for myself, I usually stick to it literally down to the minute. I give tours to my friends around my hometown of Seattle, and we stick to those to the minute, so I was like, okay, you know what? I know the bus schedules, I know how long things will take for walking based on Google Map estimates. There shouldn't be anything that goes wrong, right? Well, you'll see. But anyway, my schedule was, I was gonna leave the hotel at 9.32 a.m. I was willing to leave earlier, but none of the stores really opened earlier than 9 anyway, so there wasn't really any big reason to leave earlier than that. And specifically with the bus schedules, I wanted to catch specific buses and also have time for some breakfast. It was already, I believe, 2 to 3 a.m. at this time, so I was going to be running on a healthy 6 to 7 hours of sleep, which, uh is more than I get usually. I usually get five or six, so this was an improvement over my usual sleeping time, which I knew I needed to get more sleep than usual because I was going to be walking around and trying to navigate around a foreign country all day. Now, here is where I made my big mistake. Specifically setting off, I had my credit card, I had a little bit of cash, not a ton of cash. I usually travel with cash, but for whatever reason it had dwindled over the previous bouts of the trip. Yeah, for, for whatever reason, my cash supplies had dwindled. I don't know why. Uh, but anyways, I, I had gone out and I was like, okay, so I have my credit card, that should be totally fine. So. I did not factor in having to stop by an ATM here, and we'll get back to that one later, and I realize I'm saying this a lot, but anyways, going back to the plan, I wanted to leave the hotel at 9.32 a.m. From 9.32, I was going to take one hour to transit to Brickopa Spielwaren. This was the furthest possible destination from my hotel, and as such, it made sense to start at the furthest possible one, and then work my way inwards, instead of working my way outwards and then having to double back, because essentially, around half of the stores were west of the hotel or northwest, and around the other half of the stores were on the completely opposite end, which meant that I would have had to actually work my way out and back. So. At 10.31, I was going to arrive at Brickopa Spielwaren, which factored in trains, buses, and walking. Around 10.31 to 11.15 was going to be my time to explore the store, which is around 45 minutes. After exploring the store and actually purchasing all the stuff that I wanted to, I was going to transit to the next door, Hamburger Comic Laden. That was going to last from 11.15 a.m. to 11.48. Again, between 11.48 and 12.15, I was going to explore the store, giving myself a little bit less time, actually a little under 30 minutes, but it also looked like this was a store that focused both on comics and used toys in general and just happened to have some used LEGO, so I didn't need to spend that much time because it wasn't a dedicated LEGO-only store. From there, after exploring the store, I would take transit to Kraskeist. This was from 12.18 to 12.38, going off of the bus schedules. From 12.38 to 1 p.m. I was going to explore the store, and from 1.04 to 1.37 I was going to transit back to the hotel. So essentially I would have visited three locations by around 1.37. You may also notice that I also made a pretty major mistake in that I did not factor in eating into this. I was definitely going to eat a larger breakfast, which uh, didn't happen, which is what we're going to explain when we actually jump into what happened, but I was going to eat a larger breakfast and honestly just kind of soldier it through until dinner because because let's, let's, let's be real here, Lego takes precedence over health and food, so uh, I was not going to eat, I was going to maximize my time. But anyways, I knew at a certain point that after visiting three stores, I probably was going to be carrying around a lot of bags, and I really am not about having to lug around all these bags to different stores. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back to the hotel and drop off everything at the hotel, drop off the goods, and I allotted myself only a few minutes for that 137 to 145 because it was really just going to be able to drop them off. Now my plan was to go from 1.47 to 2 p.m., transit to Steinzeit, 2 to 2.45, explore the store because that seemed like a dedicated Lego store, 2.50 to 3.22, transit to Bricks Bramfeld, 3.22 to 4, explore the store, again a dedicated used Lego store, and finally from 4 to 4.37, transit back to the hotel, drop off the goods until 4.44, and this was when I was being really optimistic, I was like, okay, you know what, maybe I can actually fit Bardo Brick, which was the store I visited on Sunday, Sunday into this schedule, just hit everything on Saturday so I have a chill day of just packing and leaving on Sunday. <laughs> I really thought I would have time for that. Well, you know, you know, I, I was optimistic. So 
From 444 to 549, I thought I was going to be able to go to Barta Brick. From 549 to 710, I was going to give myself a ton of time to explore the store. I was really looking forward to meeting the owner. And from 710 to 818 p.m., I would transit back to the hotel, upon which I would meet up with my friend for dinner. Now, my friend is actually into LEGO. He's part of the reason why I started this channel, and he's actually been featured in a lot of our early videos. He's not into LEGO nearly as much as I am to go on a crazy itinerary like this, which I don't blame him for. So... Instead, he kind of explored the city and did his own thing while I was going to go out and do this. So I was planning all this stuff and I was looking at the map, and honestly, I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to paste this down in the description below. If anyone actually wants to do this, I legitimately think that if you were even 5% more prepared than I was, you would be able to pull this off. The problem was that, well, one, I don't speak any German. I can only speak English and French. Those are the two languages I speak. Uh, German is not very close to either of them. So that was one big barrier. But I was like, you know what? I have Google Translate. It's fine. I'll be okay. Uh, the other thing is that, again, didn't have a lot of cash. Only had my... I actually brought a, quite a few credit cards. I brought my credit cards. I brought my debit cards. I brought a lot of cards with me. Um, so I was like, okay, I should be able to be covered there. <sighs> well, this is Hamburg. And uh, spoiler alert, as an American tourist, they don't accept American cards. Not a single one of the six different cards I brought worked at any store. Not a single store accepted my cards, and I realized this very quickly. But uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves, so let's go back to exactly how this went out. So I left the hotel very optimistic, and I was sticking to my schedule when I left, and then I arrived at Brickopa Spielwerden. Now this was a really exciting one at first because it seemed like a smaller store, but I was like, oh, okay, cool. They've got a large brick-built giraffe on the outside. They have a whole section dedicated to kind of specialized little kind of roller coaster sets from Lego and whatnot, and this is going to be a really cool one. So I enter in, I'm really excited, I'm like, okay, it took me an hour to get here, so this is going to be a whole, whole ordeal, and may I add, it was quite an ordeal actually getting there, because for one, I did not know how the bus system or train system worked, I got very lucky by having a passenger who spoke English, who essentially talked me through it on the first bus I boarded, I boarded without a ticket, I was just gonna kind of try to beg and ask them to let me go on, and I, I should have done my research beforehand, I did try to do my research, and I got like this 9 euro ticket, which I think was supposed to work, I did confirm it with an English-speaking passenger on the train, so thank you so much, random stranger who helped me out there. But anyways, I made my way over. It was an hour. And then I realized when I entered the store, I had made a pretty big mistake. Because, you see, this store did not actually have any LEGO sets. Instead, every single boxed set that they sold was a knockoff brand. Now, I have nothing really strongly against knockoffs, especially the ones that are German manufactured. They're usually really good. I, I know there's a lot of really great German knockoff bricks. I just don't use knockoffs. I, I don't really integrate them into my collection. I don't even have any necessarily hatred for them, especially the ones produced by uh, German companies. I just don't really need them. But then I quickly realized that this store was only selling knockoff sets. And mind you, they, they did look pretty good. They, they had a lot of cool stuff, but I don't buy knockoffs. The only LEGO items they actually had were individual minifigures, and, well, I don't really need any. Now, I did spend my time, I did my due diligence, I looked at every single minifigure, and I went through the list, and I didn't really not own any of them, and there was no reason for me to buy minifigures. They also had these kind of small little packs, with which had, like, little individual LEGO pieces, like, they had an octopus, and they had, like, a parrot and stuff like that, but they were all basically 50 cents, and... I didn't really need any, so I was like, okay, you know what, this is, I wouldn't say a bust, but it wasn't really necessarily a needed trip. So then I realized that the next location was actually in walking distance, and this was something that was pretty interesting to me, because I had initially thought I had to do transit, but after pulling it up on the map, I realized I could save money and time by just, well, walking, because again, the bus wasn't actually supposed to come until I had spent much longer at the store, longer than I needed to, because well, this store didn't have anything I needed, and I could instead just walk to the next location, which was actually not something I had planned in my schedule. This was a different used LEGO store that kind of appeared on the map. But you know what? I was ahead of schedule. I was like, I was feeling pretty optimistic. So I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure I can make it over. Let, let's try to walk over to this other location. So here I am, walking along the street, and as I was going, I began to get more and more 
suspicious, let's say, of exactly what this store was. Now, I searched on Google Maps for Lego, and this claimed to be a used Lego store of some kind. And I was like, oh, interesting how that's like literally only like a 10 minute walk away from the first location I went to, but hey, I'm not complaining, let's go check it out. I soon found myself in a residential neighborhood. And uh, well, let, let's see exactly what I had to say. I actually filmed myself walking down the street here. So let's take a moment to watch those. Yeah, so um, apparently the store is a minute away. All I see are houses. Um, oh dear, this is uh, looking less and less likely. Uh, wish me luck. And yeah, that was uh, just straight up somebody's house. I don't know if he has an online shop or a Bricklink store. Uh, Google Maps literally said it has in-store shopping, so I'm not really sure what's up with that. But uh, we are on our way back to the next stop. Uh, actually ahead of schedule now because nothing much else to do. So after that very fruitful and productive experience, you can notice that I was lowering my voice because I was passing by a lot of folks and I did not want to seem crazy just speaking to my phone too excitedly. But yeah, so that was what happened. And mind you again, I did not purchase anything from the first store. I did not find a second store. So I had not actually gotten a chance to try out and see whether it was possible to buy anything. But then while I was waiting for my bus, I went into a grocery store. And you know what, one of the coolest things about Europe is that they have these really cool Lego magazines where they actually have specialized minifigures and they do things for Ninjago, they did it for basically all their original themes, they have Star Wars, they have City and whatnot. And they also have these amazing Lego Ninjago playing cards. Now, I've done a few videos of these on my channel, you can actually check them out if you want. The Ninjago playing card game is actually really, really fun. So. I wanted to actually pick up a ton of cards and I also wanted to get some magazines because they actually included a pretty rare minifigure, the dragon version of Kai from Crystallized in a 4 or $5 magazine, so I was like, wonderful. At least this isn't a wasted trip, they have a ton of these magazines in stock, I'm gonna stock up on them, and they also have these three packs from a few years ago, like they have magazines from 2018 in this very obscure store because they, no one probably bought them since then, so I was like, you know what, this is really cool, at least this wasn't a wasted trip. Ah, but you see. Um, I was there at the checkout, and I was ready to check out, I gave them my card, and they were like, no, we don't take, we don't take, uh, Bank of America, we don't take Visa, we don't take Wells Fargo. I went through my cards, and they were like, no, we don't take any of these, we only take German credit cards. Well, that was an unexpected surprise, to be sure, and an unwelcome one, because I was wholly unprepared for this, which meant that I had to take a detour to locate an ATM. So... Mind you, I was in a pretty residential spot. This was literally in the middle of nowhere in the far, I believe, northwest compared to the main city. There was nothing. Not an ATM, no stores, no nothing around. There was nowhere I could exchange for cash. So I was like, okay, you know what? I better make my way back to the city and see how that goes. So, you know, there I was kind of navigating my way on. I texted my friend. I'm like, hey, were you able to buy anything today? And he was like, yeah, actually, now that you mentioned it, no, no. I, I couldn't even get a pizza because I had my card only. So I went to an ATM and got cash. So he told me he went to an ATM. So I was like, okay, good to know that, like, at least there are working ATMs around. I took an hour bus back to the city. So I'm, I'm going by or, or close to an hour. I think it was close to, like, close to 30 minutes because I was, I was kind of going halfway back. And so I'm basically in the city, and I was like, you know what, I need to take a stop somewhere randomly just to the closest ATM. So I go up, pull up Google Maps, it turns out that ATMs are actually a lot more sparse than I thought they would be. So I was looking through, and there was one that happened to be on some random stop. So I was like, okay, fantastic. I'm just gonna get off the bus here. The bus schedules seem pretty reliable. <laughs> they seemed pretty reliable. So I'm gonna get off here, and I'll just get my money, and you know, we'll, we'll call it good. So let, let's cut to that. We've acquired the goods. So with the money acquired, it was time to go to the next stop. Thankfully, this ATM was in walking distance to our next location, which was kind of the comic store and Lego store hybrid. And I went in, I was excited, I was ready to spend my cash, and lo and behold, they did not have anything. Instead of the U sets, which were advertised on their website, they just had a ton of new modern sets, and I did not see anything of note, which was very, very unfortunate. Now, that being said, I mean, it does it wasn't necessarily false advertising. I'm sure at some point they did have use sets about, uh, let's see, when were these photos on Google Maps taken? Uh, about a year ago. Yeah, it makes sense. So, they didn't have them anymore, and they just had the sealed sets. 
So that was, honestly, kind of a bust. And at that point, I was, okay, you know what? I've been to, or I've tried to go to three different locations. I've really only been to two. And we haven't gotten anything. And we've wasted a lot of time already. And, you know, I'm not one to, like, just force myself to buy something. I I'll only buy something if I actually do need it. But it did kind of suck to have spent so much time and not bought anything. So let's see what my thoughts were during this time. Okay, so it has been one and a half hours. I'm at a bus stop in literally the middle of nowhere, and I have gotten nothing. So let's see if our the future of our journey will be a little more fruitful than this. Uh, I'll check in with you guys later. Yeah, so there I was standing at a bus stop, and here's where things began to go wrong. And you might be thinking, well, weren't things already going wrong by you not finding anything? Me not finding anything is, is not anybody's fault in particular. It is, is the fact that I already own a lot of sets, and the fact that I just maybe just got unlucky. That's just luck, you know? That's not due to me being incompetent. I mean, I, I kind of followed my schedule. Sure, I messed up with the money, but I then withdrew a ton of cash to use, so, so that was okay. The issues then started when, as it turns out, for whatever reason during the time that I visited, the bus routes and bus stations were under a ton of construction. Routes were being changed, buses were being redirected, some buses weren't even stopping at certain points, and Google Maps just didn't have this updated. There was no indication of this whatsoever on Google Maps. So I pull up to a bus stop and there's kind of this like piece of paper taped over it with a red X on it. And I'm like, hmm, that doesn't look good. So I pull out Google Translate and it's like, ah, stop moved. Um, this is under construction. The stop has been moved so-and-so blocks up. So I'm like, okay, I'll go a few blocks up. So I walk, I'll walk a few blocks up. I just don't see any stop. And as it turns out, at least from what I can tell and anyone native to the region can probably correct me in the comments, but the bus stop was essentially just moved a few blocks up, and the bus was just supposed to stop at, like, a random road. And there was no actual, like, physical sign that said something was a bus stop. So I probably just passed it. So I kept walking, and I'm like, wow, I feel like I've walked a high number of blocks already. I'm really not seeing a bus stop. And that just essentially added on 30 minutes of me just wandering around trying to get to the next location by trying to figure out how to get to the bus stops. So I was like, okay, you know what? Let, let's just do this. Let's let's get here as fast as possible and see what we can do. And finally, finally, oh my goodness, after after all of this, we finally made it to what was the stop that we were supposed to go to, Hamburger Comic Landon. So this, this was very promising when I first walked up to the store. First of all, they had a Lego sign up, but specifically the Lego sign was actually the older version of the Lego logo from the 80s, which means this has been here a while. The shop window also had massive Lego banners, there was a big Lego sign in front of the store, I was hyped, oh my goodness. And my excitement only increased when I entered the store. Finally, after almost two hours of just wandering around aimlessly, we had come across an amazing store that had a used Lego selection. And oh man, when I walked in, they had a Bionicle cloth banner hanging from the wall from Metro Nui. That was really cool. They had a massive, like, 2001 Racers cloth banner. They had a Lego Sports banner. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. We were, we were in it. They had these, like, custom Lego store displays. Everything looked so cool. And oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. On the back of the wall, just on the top of a shelf, I saw the most glorious treasure haven of Lego in original boxes that I had seen in so many years, and what felt like years. Like, just look at this. I saw sealed Viking sets, sealed system sets from the 80s and 90s. They even had Power Miners. They had Bionicle. They had Mars Mission and Life on Mars. They had 2001 Bionicle sets in the boxes, 2008 Fantasy Area sets, Millennium Slicer set in the box, older LEGO Technic stuff from the 80s, an Exotoa from Bionicle in the box, an Atlantis set, a ton, and I mean a ton of Technic stuff, and I've been trying to collect a lot of Technic stuff, so I was so pumped. And they even had a lot of City stuff. They had Racers, they had Creators. They even had Belleville, which is one I definitely was wanting to get. And I was ready. Mind you, I was ready to literally clean them out. I saw over half of the sets here I easily did not own. And listen, it had been two hours. I was sitting with a ton of cash and I was, I was itching. I was itching to spend my money. So I was so, so excited. I was like, okay, okay, we're going to get this. And then I actually take one foot. I step one foot inside the store. And the shop owner takes one look at me and just yells, no. 
And so I'm like, hmm, interesting. Maybe this is a translation issue. So I'm like, oh, sorry, I don't speak German. I can pull up Google Translate. Uh, can I look around here? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, he just looks at me and just doesn't say anything. And I was like, well, what's going on? So I'm like, I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe he just doesn't want to talk right now. Maybe he's finishing his lunch. So, so I'll, I'll leave him alone. And I look around and uh, I, I kind of approach some of the shelves and he just yells no while pointing at me. So I'm like, hmm. Some, something's odd here. And I was like, are you closed? And he was like, no. And I, I type this into Google Translate. I type, are you closed with a question mark into Google Translate. I translate it into German. He looks at it and he was like, no. And so I say, I typed in, you are open. Yes. And then he said, yes. So I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going to buy some stuff. So I go up to the wall and I'm like, hey, can I get these? And he's like, no. So th this was the extent to my conversation with the store owner. And maybe again, Maybe he was in a bad mood. Maybe I was doing something wrong. Maybe I had come in during his lunch break. Maybe this was a translation issue. I really don't know. And uh, I wasn't really able to get any context clues. Now, what made me feel a little bit better is that a German couple walked in as well, and they, they were clearly from the area, and he also took one look at them, and uh, he didn't yell no, but the moment they tried to buy something, he just said no and walked away. So at least I knew it wasn't just me. It wasn't me doing something wrong. Clearly, for whatever reason, he was not willing to sell anything. And I, oh, I tried. I said, look, I, I want to buy these boxes. I typed into Google Translate. I was like, I, I want to buy them. And he just kept shaking his head and saying no. Now, one theory that I was kind of talking with my friend about this later is that maybe they were just like empty boxes. You know, may maybe they didn't have any Lego in them and he was just keeping the boxes. Uh, except that wasn't true because there were a couple of Lego boxes sitting around and they were sealed and full of bricks. So that wasn't the case. And beyond that, he actually had a bin full of specialized older Lego pieces that were used, which was really cool. I had a good time looking through it. And I was like, okay, at the very least, I'll buy some of these pieces because there are actually some parts I need. But no, no, he, he, he didn't let me. He just kept saying no and shaking his head. Uh, he seemed very angry at this point, so I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to cut my losses and just leave. Clearly, I'm not welcome here, uh, which was very unfortunate because they had so much stuff. Like, this was a really cool store. Along the walls, there were different Lego bricks. In his back room, there was, like, a storage catalog area that was all just with Lego pieces. Like, there were just a ton of Lego parts sorted, like, sorted and ready for sale. Uh, in the back back of the shop, which I could see with my own eyes, uh, but for whatever reason, he just really, really did not want me purchasing anything from that store. Now, I was kind of curious about this, because I was like, well, what's going on with this? So I, I looked up some, like, actual reviews of the store, and as it turns out, at least according to some of these reviews, which I don't know if they're to be trusted... Um, but a lot of the, the, the reviews, let, let, me, let, me, let me read out loud the top review. Uh, the elderly gentleman who works here has no desire for customers. He is not only unfriendly, but also refuses to sell products. On his website it says discount on everything. On the spot he said, I don't sell anything here, and certainly not with a discount. Okay, thank you then and goodbye. Hmm, I'm really curious how this store actually is operating. Here's another review. I don't usually write reviews, but this visit annoyed me enough that I'd like to share my experience. Blah blah blah, this is a really long one. And suddenly, he is sitting at the desk, and YouTube is more interesting than customers. I mean, listen, listen, I, I, I understand that. Maybe he was watching some Duckbricks videos. I understand refusing money just to watch Duckbricks videos. I mean, that's, that's high quality content. Uh, but no hello, no nothing. There was no social interaction, we saw a lot of Lego, and all he yelled was, this is my kitchen, as the friend took a step inside the store. There were bags hanging there, and the owner did not or could not separate private and commercial life. They tried to purchase things, and he just refused to sell it to them. So it makes me feel a little bit better that it, like, wasn't me doing something wrong. It seems that the owner just really doesn't want to sell things to people, and if he's in a bad mood or just, like, doesn't want to, he'll just say he doesn't want to sell things, which I don't know how you can operate a store and, like, just not want to sell things, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, that was really, really weird. And let's, let's hear some of my thoughts on that experience. I think that was probably the strangest retail experience of my life just there. I have no idea what was going on. Uh, I, as I just did over voiceover, I explained uh, what I was greeted with when I entered the store. And uh, yeah, still have no clue. Uh, it's uh, now pretty late and I still have not bought anything. So wish me luck, I'm going to the next store. So after that, well, another bust. So this was, I, I guess, stop number four or five and that was already a bust. I was like, oh my goodness. 
I'm really tired, and uh, I haven't gotten anything. I'm, I'm also getting hungry, because this was already getting pretty later in the afternoon, but I was like, you know, whatever. We'll push through, we'll go to the next location. Let's go to Cross Keast. This was Records, Toys, and more. And I saw on their website and on the Google Maps that they actually had a lot of used LEGO, which was super exciting. So I was like, okay, this is in walking distance. I'm going to walk over. It was like a 15, 20 minute walk. Not too bad. I make my way over there and um, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm like, okay, let's see this. Uh, and then I go up to the store and I realize something very, very tragic. Because you see, all of the lights were turned off. And I was like, okay, maybe it's just dark inside. I look at the store window and, oh, I'm getting excited because they had a lot of older LEGO Star Wars stuff. They had minifigures for sale in bulk at really good prices. Like, I was looking at the prices of these and they were really amazing. They also had a lot of custom Star Wars clone figures, which was quite exciting to me. And looking inside the store, they had a massive selection of used LEGO. This was so exciting and I could not wait to take a step inside and see what wonders this store had to offer. Except for the fact that I walked up to the door and they said, on this specific day, not any other day, only this specific day, they were out on, I, I guess, vacation or they just decided not to open the store today with a little sad face underneath the text. And mind you, that was my exact expression. I was feeling very sad because this was location five or six and it was very promising. It was literally another one in a row where I saw such amazing stuff that I really could have added to my collection and would have had a really cool experience documenting and taking photos of and videos of in the store and purchasing from, and I just couldn't. At the very least, with this one, they left a note. I mean, on Google Maps, it said they were open, but I understand it. They, they were out maybe on vacation or out sick or something, so they were closed today. Too bad, so sad. Nothing I could have done there. I felt a lot happier about this one being closed than I felt about the other store just refusing to sell me anything at least like I guess that was something but it is what it is so that store was closed <laughs> let's take a look at my reaction because I was losing it at this point <sighs> it's closed so after that very eloquent display of exactly how I was feeling in the moment I then decided well you know what I'm not going to give up I'm gonna go to the next location on my list because you know what I'm not a quitter we're, we're gonna do this, we're gonna keep powering through. Even though the first four to five, even six locations did not work, we're, go we're gonna keep going, you know? We're, we're gonna make this work and uh, we're gonna find something. So then I realized very quickly that you actually need a mask to go on the transit system, specifically the subways of Hamburg, Germany. This was not the case anywhere else in Europe, but it was a regional thing, so I was like, okay. So I reach in my bag for a mask and realize I gave my last mask to my friend the previous day, so I was actually out. So then I had to waste even more time going to a random grocery and trying to purchase a mask, which I was eventually able to do, but you know what, that was just more wasted time. And when time was short already, I was running back and forth, I really, really did not have a lot of time to spare. So I was like, you know what, we, we gotta do this, Let, let's just hurry up and just go. The next one from there was going to be one of the most promising ones, or at least one of the most exciting ones, because I had actually been talking to some folks on Instagram, and they were saying that this was going to be a really good store. That was Steinzeit. So I was like, okay, you know what? We're going to transit back to this Steinzeit store. It's going to take us a few different times to kind of go on the subway itself, but this is exciting. Let's take a look at Steinzeit, and after that, we'll go to Bricks Bramfeld and go back to the hotel. So, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, finally, after sitting on the subway with my mask, kind of going along and waiting to get to the store, this was a long journey, it was finally in sight. Let, let's take a look at my expression and my reaction now. I can see it. I swear to God, if this store is closed, or if they tell me to leave for literally no reason, I will actually just give up right now. And, oh my goodness, thankfully, the store was in fact open, so I did not have to give up right then and there. And, oh man, I don't know if this was a twist of fate, maybe the store owner of this store is like, some, some like, master of fate, such that he made me so frustrated at this point that I just was willing to spend money on anything. Oh, but I, I went crazy at this store. Let's take a look at exactly what Steinzeit has to offer. So this was easily the most welcoming experience I had in the store itself. It was a really great time actually going in and seeing other AFOLs like purchasing things and there were ships hanging from the ceiling. There were Lego sets in kind of containers and whatnot. There were really old stuff priced really well. And that is the one thing, the prices in this store. Oh my goodness. The prices were unlike anything I have ever experienced in the United States. 
Now, this did come at a time when the Euro-Dollar parity was literally one-to-one. -one. I got so incredibly lucky that during a, a very short span of time, I think it was only for literally today, the Euro value was worth exactly as much as the dollar. And that was wonderful, because that meant that all of these prices that you're seeing here were basically in good ol' Freedom Land American dollars. And that meant that the prices were actually really good. I mean, they already were really good, but they were even better than usual. Take a look at this. One of these sets here was, I mean, we're going to kind of pass a lot of sets, but let me just list off some examples. There was the UFO kind of command mothership, 32 US dollars. That's right, 32 from Lego UFO. I already have the set, so I didn't get it. I left it for someone else to get, but that's the kind of value we're talking here. They had Toa Lee Khan and Kikanalo for like 20 to 30, which was in the box, which was like crazy. Again, I already own the set, so I left it for someone else, but oh my goodness, now I kind of wish I got it, then I could have used it as a prize for like a contest, but this was literally amazing. I mean, the Burj Khalifa, which is an exclusive architecture model to Dubai, was $59, or 59 euros. Like, I could not believe my mind here. Oh my goodness, like, I was losing it. This was Lego heaven, and I was so, 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 so happy. And you bet, you bet I purchased literally everything I could find in the store that I did not already own. Did I end up spending close to, uh, let's see, $880 exactly at the store? Sure, maybe, yes, but was it worth it? Oh, it was worth it. Oh my goodness, you bet it was worth it. After literally five to six stores of getting Lego blue balls and seeing so many amazing sets that I couldn't buy, this was it. It was the final time to get things and I was so, so happy to be able to get these. I mean, they even had the original Batcave in the box for 250 What the heck? What are these prices? America, take notes. Now, some of my favorite things were just being able to dig through the bins and just seeing how well-priced a lot of these vintage sets were. A set that could light up and that was from the 80s was only, I mean, close to like 15 euros? Which, wait, no, 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 8 euros! 8, eight euros! Oh my goodness, I, I was beyond myself at how good the prices were. So after going through this incredible, incredible store, would highly, highly recommend you check this out. This is the Steinzeit store. Thank you so much for being open on the day that I went. Oh my goodness. I was very happy. This was Steinzeit Hamburg. I also could not physically walk anymore. I took home two massive, and I mean massive bags. They were incredibly heavy, they were falling out of my hands, and it became very clear that even if I wanted to go anywhere else, I literally could not. I physically would not be able to go anywhere else. So I was like, okay, you know what? I can't go anywhere else, but we're going to go back to the hotel. We're going to recap the spoils of war here. The, the victory the victory lap is what we're taking. And we're going to drop all this stuff off. So I go back to the hotel and I unlaid my entire haul on the bed. And yeah, yeah, this I got all this from one store. And you know what? All the sets in this image, $880. Can you believe that? All of this? Like that, that's, that's pretty good. I, I mean, that, that's really good. Um, yeah, I was, I was, especially with the boxes, I was blown away. We had the Command Center one, which is something I really wanted for $69? How much is even this on Bricklink? Like, let, let's take a look. Control Center one, set number 8094. I'm gonna look up on Bricklink right now. How much is set number 8094? Okay, uh, incomplete for like $100. Let, let's find a complete one. 150? Yeah, that, that's the cheapest one. It's in Italy. 100? No, that's without pen. No. Okay, complete 150 in the Netherlands. 148 dollars. I paid. I paid 69. Nice. Actually nice. Like very very nice. That's like literally 50 percent off Bricklink prices. What? So yeah, that was my amazing experience in the store. The prices were. So much lower than Bricklink, I honestly kind of regret just not getting more that I could have maybe given away as prizes or given away for this channel. However, we're, we're gonna get to it, but uh, I was I was already, I didn't know it yet, but I was I was nearing the limit of what I could actually go to. So I was like, you know what, this is great, let, let, let's, let's move on from here and take a look at our next location. And uh, you can see just how happy I was in these clips walking out of the store with this haul. Well, that was worth the trip. All right, let's uh, drop these off at the hotel, then we're off to the next stop. Yeah, you can tell I was pretty happy about that. I still cannot believe my eyes to this day at the amazing prices I got from these. We made it. Okay, so yeah, oh no, no, don't fall, don't fall, please. Uh, Lego there, 
this is, I mean, you can see the size of this. Uh, we made it. Time for round two. So anyways, with that out of the way, I was like, okay, you know what? It's already getting pretty late. I spent more than the allocated time here. Let's go to our final stop, Bricks Bramfell. And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I'll have time for Bardo Brick. Maybe. <laughs> I really thought I did. So I take the tram to Bricks Bramfell with all my bags dropped off. And I was like, okay, wonderful. I'm, I'm, a, I'm free. I, like, I've emptied my game inventory. I, I'm ready to stock up again. Let's take a look. And thankfully, Bricks Bramfeld was open, so my luck had taken a turn for the better. Now, this was kind of a smaller store in admittedly what I would call the middle of nowhere, and I realize I've been using that term a lot, but, I mean, this literally was, like, nowhere, nowhere. Like, it was not the city, it was in the residential neighborhood area, but it was great. They packed in a lot of really cool stuff here, and sure, there maybe were a little bit less items for me to get. I, oh, I already owned most of these sets they had. They still did have a lot of sealed older sets, which was really cool, so that was very cool to see that and they had a lot of kind of like older random use stuff too but I also noticed that the prices here admittedly were not quite as good as the previous store and maybe that was my own fault from going from one amazingly priced store to the other but yeah the prices were not fantastic they were honestly just okay so I was like okay you, you know what I'm not gonna go crazy here the prices are just average compared to what I just experienced so I'm only gonna really get stuff that either is priced well or stuff that I really need so I'll just go into the store. It is a good store. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a really cool place. They also had a lot of prototype stuff, which I thought was really cool, like these like special satin and clear Darth Vaders. They also cost $76 or euros each, so I was not going to buy one, but they were very cool to get, and I actually was able to get a clear helmet from the other store the next day, so that was great. But I saw a lot of really cool stuff, and I think I got a sports set for 18 which was in the box, so that was pretty cool to see. And for the most part, just kind of smaller stuff here until I saw that they had some LEGO Technic sets, and I am trying to collect every single flagship LEGO Technic set. So, specifically what I did is that I saw two of the biggest Technic sets that I did not already own, and I was like, immediately, you know what, done, if we can come to a deal on this, if we can get some sort of discount, I'll buy both of them and be out of your hair. And that's exactly what I did. So after buying the two Technic sets, three what it appears to be other LEGO system sets, a couple of minifigures, and the sports set. I spent around 455 euros on this. They gave me 10% off. Thank you so much. That's really nice. It was supposed to be like $506, but I spent close to $500 here, which is honestly not as much as I was spending at the other stores, but it was still pretty sizable because I got two really big Technic sets for basically Brickling price. And here's where my problems began. Yeah, so I realize this is probably the second or third or maybe even fourth most suspicious thing I've done today, but uh, yeah, I'm in a random neighborhood and I just stopped to empty the contents of this right here and this guy right here into my bag. So I'm kind of crouched down by the bushes uh, in the neighborhood by some cars. Let's hope nobody thinks this is incredibly sus. I've got my Lego bags right here. So now I can finally find a place to throw these out and get on the bus back home. There's my bus. Hey, hey wait, bus, come back. Yeah, so as you just saw, I very quickly realized that it was simply impractical to carry around two LEGO Technic boxes. Unfortunately, the store did not have any bags, uh, at least bags that were big enough to hold what I had bought. Thankfully, I came prepared and I actually brought a kind of large-scale duffel size bag with me to carry all the LEGO in. So I was like, okay, great. I was walking around, lugging around the boxes of these sets, which were sealed. They were actually sealed, so that was really cool. So that's why I actually was able to, that's why I spent so much, because they were, they were sealed new in the box. I unfortunately had to dump the boxes though, although I don't keep Technic boxes or kind of boxes that were that modern, these are not too discontinued, so I didn't feel too bad. I found a recycling bin in the back of an alley and I put them in because I honestly did not have anywhere else to put them, which I feel kind of bad about because I don't know if that was like someone's house recycling or like another store's, but I was, I was really desperate at this point and I was like, I, I just need to find a recycling bin to put these in. Anyways, I was walking off with the sets in my bag and that's when we began to run into some problems because you see the bus that was supposed to pick me up at the stop the stop had been moved and oh this was a very big problem 
Not super relevant to the story here, but it's just a kind of funny moment. I got really excited because I saw a taxi and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna take that. Uh, but as it turns out, I am so in the middle of nowhere that this is where the taxi drivers live and park their own taxis. So it was a parked taxi car outside a house, and sadly, not my selfies. So after those fun reactions, I soon came upon a sign that would become literally the bane of my existence for the next several hours, and I mean several. I don't speak German again, so I will butcher the pronunciation of this, but uh, it said Haltstel Verle, which for the non-German speakers in the audience, it says stop relocated. Now, as far as I could tell, it did not say where the stop was relocated to. Google was less than helpful in terms of realizing where these stops were. And I kept on walking because I was like, okay, you know what? If I can't go to this stop, I'll take the next bus at the next further stop. So there I am, I'm walking along, the hours are ticking up, I get to the next stop on foot. And uh, what, do you, what do you guess? It, uh, it also said, Haltstel Verlecht, stop relocated. Again, do not know where it was relocated. I, I really just was very confused at this point, and I was also very hungry at this point as well, because uh, it was close to 4.30 p.m. I had wasted I, at least an hour and a half just trying to find the bus, and I was getting very, very worried and desperate. I usually would like to think that I'm totally kind of okay navigating around a foreign country. I've done it before by myself a lot, and I usually am able to figure stuff out. This, this I will tell you, is the first time I felt genuine fear that I would not be able to make it back easily whatsoever. I downloaded a German kind of taxi app and tried to call a taxi, nothing. Obviously, I tried Lyft and Uber. The first thing I tried was Lyft and Uber. It would have cost me $200 to get back to the city, but I was getting desperate. And no, no Ubers were around, no Lyfts were around, no taxis were around. I went down the list of foreign taxi companies that you could hail. I literally just went down and tried to book one. Not a single one had one around this area, which was mostly residential. It was also a Saturday, mostly everything was closed. And yeah, so so at this point, my friend's texting me and he's like, hey man, where, where are you? Like, And I was like, oh, well, you know, that's, that's a really good question. I, I wish I knew myself. And I was actually getting very worried that not only was I not going to be able to bake it back, but the later that it got, actually the later it got in the afternoon, the more likely it is that buses were going to become more and more infrequent and I would have to be able to find somewhere to stay. I essentially would be homeless with a ton of Lego with me. There were no hotels around here. Mind you, I did check that because I was going to go to a hotel and ask them to call a taxi for me, uh, but there were no hotels around. And at this point, I was getting very, very concerned. And I was also getting really, really hungry. So come 5.30 or something, and I'm like, okay, I need to sit down and collect my bearings. I've been standing outside in the sun just sweating because it was really, really hot and I was just burning up. I was lugging around like this really heavy bag of Lego 2. It was like cutting into my shoulder because it's two like massive Technic flagship sets that I was essentially just carrying around on my shoulders, plus a ton of other Lego. And at this point I was like, I, was, I just need a break. I, I could not go on any further. I had reached my physical limit. And that's what happens sometimes on the, in the pursuit for Lego. I, I, you sometimes reach your physical limit doing so. So thankfully, I found a Burger King. And the, the little like kind of monkey part of my brain went, Oh, I recognize that. I know that one. So I go to Burger King. I sit down. And, and here's my reactions. So I'm currently stuck at a Burger King. Not really sure where to go from here. Every single bus stop has been relocated. So I'm going to eat some food for the first time today at 4.30 p.m. And figure out what's next. As I slowly sank into the pit of despair and lost my grip on sanity, you can see that I was really enjoying my meal, replenishing my energy, and being constantly reminded that I had a massive bag of Lego to carry around, which certainly would not be easy to bring around whatsoever. And so, there I sat, eating my burger and pondering my life choices and what had led me to this moment, when I began to slowly realize and accept my fate. If no buses were coming, and there were no taxis or Ubers or cars around, I may just need to walk back. Now, just on a whim, I pull up Google Maps and uh, I look at the map and it is a one hour and 37 minute walk. Now, on, an on another day, this might not be that bad. You might even be watching and say, come on, Duck Bricks, you can walk for an hour 37 minutes. But do keep in mind that this was my first meal of the day at 4.30. It may be starting to get dark by the time I was getting back. I was in a foreign country, I did not speak the language, and I was also basically dead exhausted from literally running around the city the basically since I woke up just to go to all these different Lego locations. So I'd essentially been on foot for much, much longer for an hour and 37 minutes at this point. 
but I quickly realized I basically had little to no choice because I could not figure out where the buses were coming. I literally stood on the side of the street for 30 minutes waiting to see a bus pass by and I didn't. I, that's all I did for 30 minutes until I realized, you know what? This is wasting time. I need to get back. Let's just walk. So I finished up my meal, I had a good meal, meanwhile my friend is just like going nuts, he's like, dude, wh where the heck are you, like, wh what is going on, and I was like, yeah, well, I mean, I might be back in like two hours, if I don't, if I'm not back in two hours, like, something bad happened, like, check my location, but it was at this point where I realized that there was really no other option here, and mind you, I may have been just being dumb, like, you may be a native to this area and been like, yeah, by bus stop relocated, it means that it was relocated like two minutes down, and if you just waited there, it would have come. I did that, like, I think I did that. I walked two minutes up one way, I walked two minutes down the other way in all four directions. Nothing, like, no, no bus ever came, so I, I don't know what it means by relocated, and I don't know how, no, um, where it was relocated. There was a little printed out paper sign by some of the bus stops that had some very vague directions as to where they might be. I tried to follow that, but the bus just didn't come. Either it was late, it was not on time, or it just wasn't coming to that location. I couldn't afford to keep on waiting around to find out. So at this point, I just start walking back to the hotel, until I reach a point where I realize that very quickly there is no sidewalk. So there I am, literally walking on the side of the freeway or road, in the shoulder of the road, just dragging my bag along, and I believe around an hour passes, and I would made my way back on foot about an hour, until finally, oh my goodness, this, this was a lifesaver, finally, I see that one bus was going my way, I, I'd wave my arms around, I go crazy, I'm like, hey, stop, stop, stop. Uh, the, the bus driver clearly took pity on me, he stopped, he's like, I don't normally stop here. He, he spoke a little bit of English, which was good, he was like, this isn't a stop, and I was like, yeah, I know, man, I've been walking for an hour, can I please get on this? I don't know where this is going, as long as it's going in the right direction, that works for me. So, after that whole adventure, after all that ordeal, I finally, finally made it back to the hotel. You can see the picture I took in the hotel elevator, I was just overjoyed to be back. After collapsing on the couch and just not doing anything for like 15 minutes because at that point my body was just sore all over, I decided to unpack my Lego and take a look at the spoils of the battle because th this felt like a battle during the day. And you can see the sheer amount of different Lego sets I got. Now granted, most of these were just kind of my haul from earlier, but now I had added two massive Technic flagship sets to it, which was a lot of stuff. You can kind of see them on the back table there with the tires and whatnot. And this was, again, very, very quickly becoming very clear to me that I was going to have maybe a little bit of trouble bringing this back. Now, I had gotten lucky in the past because previously on this trip, I had actually personally visited uh, Amsterdam and then I actually had my Lego stuff shipped back. It cost me like $100, but you know, I had to do what I had to do. I was with more than just one friend. I was with a group of friends. I didn't want to tie them up by having to pack my stuff. So I said, hey, you know what, I'll just ship it and call it good. So at this point, I wasn't actually carrying that much Lego on me. The issue was that I had brought two carry-on bags, and they were basically full with clothes and just living supplies for a month, and other souvenirs I had picked up along my journeys, like cheese and whatnot from Amsterdam. So my carry-on bags were like reaching the limit. I, I could fit maybe a fourth of the Lego that I had gotten into the bags, but that was that was about it. I was quickly coming to the very tragic realization as well that there was not a chance, not one chance, that any of the boxes that I had gotten over the course of this journey would be able to be brought back. For one, the dimensions were larger than my check-in bags, so I could maybe try to carry them on, but I also had a carry-on roller bag. I essentially was bringing on three luggages, two large check-in bags, and one carry-on, uh, one carry-on roller, as well as a backpack and my uh, duffel bag there, so I was, I was basically carrying like five pieces of luggage, and none of those were going to be able to fit any of the large-scale boxes. So I was like, okay, you know what, that's a problem for another day. Spoiler alert, that other day was uh, the next day, because I only had two days there. But I was like, okay, you know what, it's, it's time to call it easy, it's time to take a break. Let, let's see where I was sitting that headspace-wise during this time. The mission, the nightmares, they're finally over. Because there is the haul from Hamburg, day one! I still have one more store to go to tomorrow. I am really dang glad I did not have to go today. I mean, I definitely wouldn't have even made it today, but yeah, I got a lot to figure out how to pack because if you look there, oh, oh, there we go. That's my suitcase and it is 100% full. It's actually really hard to close. I have been relying on the use of 
this guy right here, this uh, extendable carry-on bag, but this certainly will not be enough to carry everything. So the question is, how on earth do I get all of this in that suitcase and that bag? Now, I already actually have ordered a bag from Amazon, but the problem is it arrives in four days. So I have it set to arrive at the hotel I'll be at in four days. However, that does not solve my current problem of how on earth do I get all of this to my next destination so I can actually pack them in the new bag. And I don't even know if everything's going to fit in the new bag. I probably, actually, I definitely bit off more than I could chew here. I mean, worst case scenario, I go out in the city, I've got literally a day left in Hamburg before we leave midday tomorrow, so I either have to do that tonight or tomorrow morning, um, but I guess I could go out and get another luggage if I really need to, but man, I'm really hoping I don't have to do that. So uh, fingers crossed, wish me luck, I'll uh, see you when I pack this all up. Oh boy. Yeah, so as you can see, I realized early on that I would have some trouble packing things, but um, unlike, I don't know, a normal person and actually deciding to pack them before moving on and before going to another store the next day, I was like, you know what, I I'm pretty tired. It's dinner time. I'm, I'm hungry again because I just walked for like an hour to get here. I l let's go get dinner and, and let's just go. So there my friend and I were walking to dinner, and uh, I actually blame him for this one, because we're walking along, at this point I'm just exhausted, I'm not even keeping- Usually when I'm walking around, like, the streets of a city, I keep my eyes peeled for Lego, like, if I see Lego, like, my radar vision goes off and I immediately pinpoint the store, but I, I was done at this point. At this point, it was basically over, and I was not really paying attention to it, until my friend, we were walking along to the mall, and he was like, Hey, look at that, Th that store says Lego on the outside, and I was like, oh yeah, it does. I mean, I'm not expecting anything much, because during my preliminary research, I identified six stores. Only two out of the six stores that I went to today were actually helpful in terms of having the Lego I wanted. I mean, technically four of them were, but I couldn't buy from two of them, so really only two stores really were helpful here. I'm not expecting too much, that probably just means they have, like, just regular retail sets. Um, well, I was wrong, because when I went to the store, it was literally just a random comic book store, and... This is what I was greeted with when I entered. I Did I mention that I love Hamburg? I, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Hamburg at this point because of my great ordeal going around the city, but also the fact that you can literally just walk into a random store on the street that is seems, for all intents and purposes, to be just a regular comic store, and then they just randomly have stuff like this on the inside. So I was overjoyed, I was so excited, and yeah, you bet. I use this opportunity to get basically everything here that I did not already own. Because again, the prices were beyond anything that I had ever experienced. The prices were really, really good, much like the first store that I was actually able to buy stuff at. I was so, so happy, and it was also really cool to see a lot of sealed older stuff as well. So they had a ton of stuff on store shelves. They had like a Lego house exclusive set, just like randomly for sale, and the price wasn't too bad either. It was like 170 I already have those, so it wasn't a big deal. But here you can see my haul. I was checking out mostly smaller sets, like some castle stuff, Star Wars, Harry Potter, some bad city stuff and town stuff, but yeah, that was really cool. And they also, of course, had Ninjago playing cards. So with that little extra haul, I was able to walk away from the store pretty happy. I had gotten a surprise store. That was kind of the bonus. The cherry on top of this day was just randomly coming across a store that had all of these old LEGO stuff. That was wonderful. I have linked, actually, let me see if I can find the exact location of what this store was. It was the comic store next to the big mall. Maybe that's not very helpful. I, I, I don't know what the name of the store was because it wasn't on my itinerary. If you search up Hamburger Meal, that was the main Hamburg Mall, it's just right outside. It is the one comic store outside. So, uh, ah, here he is. Der Comic Laden. I, I did take a picture of the storefront. I was not I was not messing up there. I, I did take a picture, of course. I gotta, gotta do it for Duckbricks. So, I do have a photo of that. So yeah, that was the store. That was wonderful. So then we go and we have dinner and I was like, okay, great. Let's now actually lay everything out and see exactly how much we have to pack. So that was after dinner, it was already at night, and everything was closed at this point. Let's take a look. Tragically, it seems that these beautiful vintage boxes will not be coming home with me and instead will be thrown out because simply, I cannot figure out how to flatten them, and even if I did, there is literally no space for them. Uh, this is 60 pounds. This is like 40. I weighed this one at 40 as well, and this is at 35, so I'm almost, or I'm over 200 pounds here, it's uh, pretty crazy, don't really want anything more on my shoulders, so these are going to have to go bye-bye, so I'm just going to quickly take a look at them now, this is the Racers Ferrari set, you can open it up like so, you can see it's pretty complicated to kind of get the glue undone there, 
Here we have the Technic set right here for the uh, winter helicopter, which is pretty cool. It has some dividers for each of the pieces. We have another Technic set 8845, which also actually does have a flip up cover showcasing some cool details as well as this particular inner part. You can see that right here, kind of showcasing how everything goes together with some alternate models. Then we have this massive train set, 4565. You can also see this flips open to reveal what you can exactly do with the set, what exactly is included, and on the back, we have some more inspiration. Finally, this is one of my most hyped sets. It is the first control center. You can actually program in drawings to actually make it draw on paper, which is very cool. Lifting that up, you can see it like so, and we can turn that over as well. Yeah, so it was at that point where I basically sat down and realized that I had to accept my fate, and there was not a chance that any of the vintage boxes could come home with me. Now this is pretty tragic for a number of reasons. For one, vintage boxes are kind of hard to come by, and I really, really hate throwing them out because they're in really, especially ones that are in good quality, it felt against everything that I had done as a LEGO fan to just discard them. But I had a few options here. I was leaving in the afternoon of the next day, everything was closed, I could maybe try to give them to the store owner for the next day store, but I also didn't want to show up and be just like, hey, do you want these like empty boxes? Because I felt like that would be kind of weird. So I was sitting there and I was like, you know what? I, I don't really have anywhere to put these. Now, the one thing I contemplated was shipping them and uh, <laughs> we're getting to that. But I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to set them aside for now just in case I can ship them because maybe I might be able to ship them on the next day. Now, you might be realizing, uh, you probably have already come to this realization, but that day was Saturday, and the next day was Sunday. Guess what stores are not open for shipping on Sundays, even in the US? Uh, that's right, post offices. So I just didn't, I, I didn't think of that. I don't know, like, I was, I was tired. I, that, was, that one was just on me. I didn't even think of that or even consider that as a possibility. There was not a chance I would be able to, just physically speaking as a human, even with my friend's help, it would not have been physically possible to bring all the Lego to our next location. I knew I had to ship them out the next day. I just, like, didn't think of it. So I wake up the next day and I had an amazing time in the next store, which was Bardo Brick. It was a pretty long train to get to Bardo Brick, but it was absolutely worth it. Again, I have a completely separate video on that because I wouldn't say this video has necessarily been negative, more that it has been chronicling my misadventures of a day that was very full of ups and downs like a roller coaster. That was all positive. That was a very positive experience. I didn't want to kind of take up this video talking about that. So that store has its own video, which I put out a while ago because I actually built everything I got from that store already. So you can check that out in the description below. But then the downside to having such a wonderful time at Barta Brick was that I then realized I was about an hour behind schedule, which wasn't going to be that big of a deal. I had allotted several hours to be able to pack and ship stuff to leave for a train, until we realized one pretty, pretty crucial thing. You see, I had thought our train was leaving at 8pm, and I had it in my notes, I had it in my schedule, I had it in our Google Doc, which I shared with my friend. Somehow. I, I don't know how this happened. It only happened on this one day, which, like, of course, was just my luck. We had booked tickets for 4.30 p.m. and not 8 p.m. I don't know, again, how that happened. It was very, very odd. I usually don't make those mistakes. So I just genuinely was very confused as to exactly how that happened. Um, so our train was leaving at 4.30. And I got back to the hotel and I'm like, okay. It, it was 2.40 by the time I got back. I did not realize our train was leaving at 4.30 until... Uh, Oh, I, I think it was around 3 that I realized I checked the time. I was like, wait, this is definitely wrong. We, we confirmed it, and I was like, oh my god. I have about an hour to pack these and ship these somehow because our train leaves in 30 minutes. It got to the point where I was like, look, look. I, I went to my friend, and I was like, look, I'm going to buy us train tickets if we miss it because this is on me. Like, we, I just booked this wrong, and he was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, but... There, the also other problem was that there were no other trains leaving, and maybe that was why, like, maybe our train got cancelled and it got changed to a different time. Still don't know how that happened, but anyways, our train was now leaving about, like, close to four hours earlier than I thought that it was, which meant that I had four hours less to pack my stuff. Specifically, I had one hour. So I was like, oh shoot, okay. Number one, he, he, here's, here's the issues that we had to come over here. Number one, I need boxes. We didn't have cardboard boxes to ship stuff. I went down to the hotel lobby and like begged them for boxes. 
they gave me this really, really beat up, like, waterlogged box that was in the trash, and they were like, eh, you can get it from the trash if you want it. I tried to use it for, like, 15 minutes. I, I really tried, mind you, and they gave me tape as well. Thank you, thank you to the hotel lobby for doing that. They gave me tape, and I really did try, but at the end of the day, it wasn't gonna happen. It wasn't gonna work, and I was like, okay, that's problem number one, which we can't solve. Problem number two is, uh, all the post offices around here are just shut down for Sunday. And again, physically looking at what we could carry on our bodies, there was not a chance we would be able to bring them somewhere else. I looked at it, I looked at the- with, we didn't have bags, we didn't have boxes, we didn't have suitcases. I tried to go buy a suitcase, like, I tried to find a suitcase store, that was the next thing. But then again, it was Sunday, all the stores in this part of town were closed on Sunday. The mall was closed, the suitcase stores were closed, the post offices were closed, I was not getting a suitcase. So I was like, okay, I'm not getting a suitcase, I'm gonna have to ship these. So I went down the list, I searched post office, and I literally called every single one until, oh my goodness, this, this was a godsend. I, I think this was just fate's way of making up for like all the misadventures on Saturday. It picks up, it's this random, like, obscure post office, and it was, like, out of some guy's house. Like, it looked like he basically lived there, and I called, and he's like, yeah, we're closed on Sundays, and I was like, I had my friend talk because my friend speaks a little bit of German, and he was like, hey, this is really urgent, we need to have these shipped in the next hour, like, we'll pay more, we'll pay to have you open the store, can you please just, like, open up and, like, consider shipping this? So he was like, oh my god, fine, whatever, just come over, make it quick, like, I'll open the store just to make the ship, which... Thank God that guy came. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe... I don't know what I would have done if if he didn't say yes. I legitimately do not know. I, I Realistically, I would have had to leave all the Lego at the hotel and just like change my flights to come back. I, I legitimately think that's what I would have had to do because there was not a chance I was getting these home otherwise. So I'm like, oh my God, okay, I'm going to run to the store. I'm going to get the boxes because first of all, I need boxes to pack the Lego in to ship them. So I run to the store, and I'm like, hey, I want to ship these two boxes, what are your largest sizes? And he points over to the boxes, and like, I'm not gonna lie, they, they, they were big, but like, I, I was expecting a little bigger. These are not like bulk buy-in boxes, they're not like super big, they're basically just like, large-ish size boxes. I've seen bigger boxes come from like, Lego, and come from Amazon, so they were like, medium-sized. And they were the largest ones he had, so I was, I was eyeballing it, I was like, okay, you know what? I'll take two, because they each cost like 25 bucks, so I was like, I really don't want to spend more, like, on more boxes, so I'll take two boxes for now. And then I quickly realized that I had, uh, well, spent all my cash the previous day. Uh, I don't know how I messed up on that, but, I mean, as you can expect, I spent $880 on the first store, $500 on the second store, even more money on the third store. I was out of cash. I did not even have 50 euros to spend, and uh, that was a big, big problem, because there I was standing at a store begging him not only to open the store, but to just give me the boxes for free. I would take the boxes and, like, leave with them, and he would just have to, like, honor my word that I would come back and, like, not just steal the boxes from him. So. He took pity on me. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, you can can you can you leave anything here of value that like that I can hold on to." So, I wasn't about to leave my ID at a random person's house and uh now, don't get me wrong, like, he was being really nice, and I, I genuinely am a trusting person. I wasn't about to leave my ID at some guy's house and just, like, leave for, like, an hour and come back to ship stuff. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll leave you my insurance card. And he's like, what is this? And I was like, it's my, like, work insurance card. And he was like, oh, okay, I guess. And he was like, are you gonna come back for this? I was like, yeah, man, I need my insurance card. Like, I will come back for it. He didn't seem too convinced, but, like, I was basically begging him at this point, and I was trying to clarify in as broken German as I could from Google Translate that this was a severe time rush. So eventually he was like, okay, fine, whatever, just come back. He, he was a younger guy. Dude, dude was chill. I Shout out to my one homie, I wish I got your name, but uh, that, that was really chill of a guy. So... We go out, and I'm like, I'm running. I literally full sprint back to the hotel. So I'm sprinting back, and I, I get back, and I'm like, okay, how much time do we have? I asked my friend. He's like, you got 40 minutes to pack all this stuff. So, oh, I packed these the fastest I'd ever done. I was throwing my used clothes in as padding. I was just putting stuff Lego in. I was mixing up bags. I was mixing up instruction manuals. 
Mind you, this is part of the reason why I haven't built any of these yet, because all the parts are mixed together, and all the instruction manuals are in a pile, and it is going to be a total nightmare to build all these sets, which I'm not looking forward to, which is one of the only times I will say I'm not looking forward to building LEGO. I Piecing these together is going to be, like, the worst nightmare possible, and if I could, like, have friends come over and help me, I will. Actually, that's probably what I'm gonna do, uh, because that this was the most rushed job packing I could. And then I was like, okay, you know what? All this is gonna be for waste if, like, the box has a hole in it or something, or I pack something poorly and they all spill out. Like, I would have just lost, like, almost $2,000 there. So, I spend enough time, I literally just cover them all in tape. I then run out of tape, I go down to the front office, they're like, we're out of tape, and I'm like, oh my god. So I sprint back to the post office, I'm like, I swear to god, I'm not, like, trying to steal more stuff from you, but can I just, like, have some tape, and I promise I'll pay you back, like, somehow, and just let me have some tape for now and he was like oh my god okay fine so he gives me the tape i full sprint back to the hotel this one i'm covered in sweat it is a sweltering hot day 90 degrees fahrenheit above it, it was the heat wave peak of the heat wave in july in the summer so i i'm sweating i'm burning up but i i cannot waste any more time i also have chronic severe asthma so i'm pretty sure i was like having an asthma attack at this time but i was like okay we gotta get this done before we leave somehow by i don't i don't know what's like superhuman feet I managed to actually pack two big boxes of the sets. I pack them up. I also pack a small box to send to one of my other friends for souvenirs, so I, I kind of killed two birds with one stone there. <sighs> yeah, so uh, as it turns out, I gotta ship all this, so wish me luck, guys. I run back to the thing, and at that point, I had sent my other friend to the ATM to get cash, and I, I Venmoed him back, so shout out to Brian. Thank you so much for just doing that and, like, going along with all this. So my friend went and got cash while I was doing all this. I then used my cash to pay for the shipping, and I was thinking, okay, how much, how expensive could shipping, like, two boxes, which I wouldn't even consider to be that large, you know? Like, they, they were large, don't get me wrong, but, like, they, they couldn't be that big. Like, how much could it be? Um, yeah, uh, $150 per box. Yeah. Uh, and also $50 for the small box. 5 zero for the small box of souvenirs I was sending my friends, which, uh, Mind you, the, the contents of that box were probably worth, like, no more than 25 to 30 top. Uh, actually, uh, may maybe 40. Now, I'm thinking back on it, maybe 40. But, uh, $50 to ship a really small box. 150 to ship each of the large boxes. But at this point, you know what, look, I'm not gonna stiff- I'm, I'm not gonna argue or try to, like, bring the prices down to the guy who basically let me, like, steal the boxes for a short amount of time and also steal his tape. So I was like, okay, you know what, that's fine. I'll pay it. So there I am paying, I am out 350 euros. So $350 to ship my stuff back. So this has careened my budget out of the realm of reasonability. But I managed to ship them, oh my goodness. And the ordeal seemed like it was over. So there I am, I sprint back to the hotel. My friend and I have literally 15 minutes to get to our train, so we book it. We, we like, we, we get a car, we, we get there as soon as possible, and we board the train the minute it's about to leave. The train leaves, we af right after we board, we, we both had ran there full sprint, and finally, the misadventure was over. So let's tally, M maybe there's some like life lessons to be learned here. Uh, number one, never go around a foreign country without like a good supply of cash with you. I thought I knew that lesson, I was just kind of dumb and like, didn't realize that I had spent so much of my cash already, like that was just poor planning. Number two, I honestly don't know how I could have fixed the bus stop thing. Like, the bus stops moving, I I'd like to think are not my fault. Maybe like, learning German and asking locals where they moved could have helped, or I actually that definitely would have helped, but nothing I could have done in the moment, so not sure what I could have done there. Um, my, my itinerary was pretty solid if you actually want to go to all these stores, which like, I, I respect anybody who tries to do this in one day. Uh, major respect if you try to pull off what I did, but you know, that, that was good. Um, shipping, it sucked. Yeah, shipping I could have prepared in, in advance for, but then again, I had two days. Saturday was definitely going to be used going to the stores. I certainly wouldn't have gotten back in time for the post offices, so I, I don't know how that could have worked out. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting back and looking at my journey, and I really don't know what I would have done differently other than bringing cash and maybe having boxes in advance. But I don't know where I would have gotten those boxes. <sighs> so that was it. That was my crazy shopping misadventure. I've been talking for an hour now, and uh, I hope that this has conveyed just how insane the lengths I will go to get used LEGO, which, like, 
let's be honest, if you really think about it, the cost to ship them back, $350, probably like negated any discount that I got. I was like so happy that I saved like $70 on one set, but then I paid $350 to ship all of the sets back to my house. So I probably didn't even save money. Like I'm pretty sure that I like lost money. If I went to BrickLink right now and just bought each of them, I probably would have just like spent less money so all of that was wasted oh my goodness but you know what and this is an experience I will not be forgetting in a long time and as crazy as it was and as insane as the schedule was and as stressed as I was on the day this certainly was one of the most memorable experiences of my trip my friend definitely can relate to how memorable it was trying to get us to the train very quickly and I certainly will not be forgetting this misadventure for a long time so thank you Hamburg for the crazy times and the insane kind of reactions and the crazy stores that you have and the prices and I, I will be back. I'm sure at some point in my life I will be back in Hamburg so maybe there will be a sequel to this video. Maybe, maybe years in the future. I don't know when the next time I'll be back but I will be back. <laughs> I will take Hamburg by storm once again and now I am prepared. Alright, so with that we've summed up my crazy Lego shopping misadventure in Hamburg, North Germany. Yeah, as you can see, there were a lot of things that I was trying to fit in. I didn't see everything I wanted to see, so I definitely have to repeat visit and come back one of these days. But I think I saw most of the really good stores. And wow, was I blown away by that last store or the couple of last ones where I kind of just randomly encountered just so many used Lego sets for such good prices and such good bulk programs and everything. This was a pretty insane experience and it was definitely one of the highlights of my trip to Germany and to Europe. Just kind of trying to navigate my way through the city while my friend was sleeping because he was sick. So I was pretty much just by myself trying to explore and while speaking literally no German, just trying to make my way through and locate what were the best used Lego stores to get to. I hope you enjoyed this look at my crazy adventure. And yeah, as you can see, there was a sneak peek at the hall near the end of the video. I don't even have all the sets cataloged on Brickset yet because there's just so, so many to work through. Now, what I need to do is actually go ahead and wash all of the used sets. I typically don't build used Lego sets before washing them, so there's a pretty monumental task to actually wash into the sets. Once that is finally done, I will get into building them, reviewing them, and expect another video, part two of this series, coming out. Who knows what, it might be a few weeks from now, maybe a few months from now, depending on how fast I build stuff. Based on my epic haul from this entire trip, there are literally hundreds of sets to work through. So it's gonna be a pretty insane building haul. I hope you enjoy that future video, but we'll end it on a sneak peek where you could actually see some of the haul itself. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below, have you visited any of these stores? Are you from the area? Did I miss any that you definitely would recommend? And I'm sure I did because there were a lot that I wanted to go to that I simply couldn't fit in. So I have to make a repeat visit. Let me know what I missed in the comments below as well. And thank you all so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more Lego news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. And bye for now.